ready to get this party started. You guys, we had to get up at six o'clock this morning and Kelly Young was not happy. <laughs> Just turn the camera around and say good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> What's up everybody? Blue Gate. Now, if he doesn't look quite as big as he did in the thumbnail, I have some explaining to do. And don't worry about that, we got some great footage coming. I'm gonna start this video completely out of whack, just like I normally do. I'm gonna do the cooking and then I'm gonna get to the footage because we have so much great footage to go through that I actually need to talk you through it. But I'm about to whip up a meal as good or better than anything I've ever cooked. We got white rice. I'm gonna go ahead and make the sauce first. Then I'm gonna clean this fish, put him on the grill and we'll start getting into the actual fishing part. So I've got one stick of butter, wild honey, onions, mushrooms, toasted coconut that I toasted myself, which is super easy. You just put it in the pan with a little bit of butter and keep stirring it, and some garlic. So I'm gonna start out with the garlic. Put about a tablespoon. Get this heat up, about medium heat. Just stirring the garlic in, getting it nice and hot with the butter. Then I'm gonna add the onions. Then I'm gonna add the mushrooms. I'm gonna let them saute down for just a second, not too long though. I just really want them to get infused with all that butter. We're gonna add some lemon. Maybe a tablespoon of lemon as well. And now we're gonna start with honey. This is wild organic honey. It's never been processed and it came from right here near my house. Probably quarter cup. Dang. It's got a little bit of the cone inside of it. Look at that. Smells good. Just stir it up. Last but not least, some jalapenos, pickled jalapenos. These are not crazy hot at all, so don't let that scare you away. This is not gonna be a spicy dish. Once it starts cooking down a little bit, it'll get thicker and stickier, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. It will all make sense in just a minute. All right, let's clean this fish. A lot of people will cut around him and pull the skin off. I absolutely despise that. I can't even stand watching somebody do it. This is actually a little bull that we caught while Kelly was in the water trying to spear one. He's not the biggest, but I can tell you one thing, he'll taste as good as the biggest dolphin that's ever swam. Doesn't matter. Size does not matter. I'm using my seven inch Pro Series Danko. They're back in stock now. So crazy how COVID has literally changed the world. Everything's sold out. You can't get certain things, boat motors, I gotta give a huge shout out to Outboard Specialties, the same people that my brother Robert Deermeat for dinner get, got his motor from. They just put a new 300 Suzuki on my boat. I literally, I started out with a 175 and I saved forever to get that. Well, guess what? I started saving pennies again and I got myself a new 300. Look at that. Jake and his buddy Tyrese are in the game room, legit screaming that they're starving. So this is how I skin a dolphin. Just like every other fish except for this one, I'm not gonna pin the knife down on the skin really hard. I don't want any of that bloodline, that unnecessary bloodline to be on this filet. And for those of y'all watching that have skinned dolphin before, you know that's pretty hard to do. Now look at that. The only bloodline we have is right here. If you pull that skin off the meat, it looks totally different and is not near as good. And I wanna grill this fish, so I wanna leave the filet together. Just gonna cut a little bit of that bloodline out. Just like so. Cool thing about this, I can always feed this to my fish in the tank. And I'm actually gonna cut these filets in half because I want to be able to put this sauce right over top of it. So I'm going to lay it just like this. One thing I want to point out though, is my brothers and I, and most of you watching who grew up like we did, we wanted to fill the coolers everywhere we went, catch as many as you can. To me now, that's four pieces of fish, enough for four people to eat. 
I'm just not into killing fish like we used to. If you really pay attention to our oceans, they're, they're in no way, shape, or form in good shape. We all need to start to conserve a little bit. You gotta think these dolphin grow fast, but they start getting pounded in the Gulf all the way around the Keys by charter captains keeping a limit of every person on the boat all the way here, all the way north, as far as you can catch them, they never get a break. So we ended up catching three, and I'm gonna show you all that in a minute. But first, let's go put them on the grill. I've got it set at 350 degrees. I'm gonna let it cook for five minutes, then I'm gonna come out and put the sauce on it. So while we're waiting out there, I'm gonna cook some for the boys, because they don't like jalapenos, honey, and all that stuff. But let's take it back to yesterday morning. So. I met a guy, Captain Mike, on Instagram, and I've had this want to go catch a swordfish forever on my bay boat. Swordfish aren't my favorite fish to catch, but it requires such an extreme type of fishing. You're fishing in such deep water with two rods, it's like so gnarly. So we start out yesterday morning, the most beautiful sunrise ever. I've got a brand new motor. Bought all kinds of good bait, bought live bait for Kelly to make a dolphin video. We have everything set. And that's where it comes into play when everybody watches us. They're like, oh, it must be so nice to fish and play all the time. <laughs> for real. Literally, I legit spent $500 yesterday to go fishing. We went sword fishing and fished for six hours, never even had a bite. We came inshore to 700 foot and fished for two more hours for tile fish never had a bite then we came in to 300 foot for sea bass and only caught one but in the middle of all that we get into the dolphin and we found an awesome pallet and i want to show you all some of that right now what do we got out there well we got something floating with birds sitting on it and we're hoping there's going to be some dolphin fish oh big fish gosh I'm you on. are, you I'm are. On. I'm on, I'm on. Now's when we gotta get the spinner rod. Did he eat it? He spit it. It must be a smaller one. Oh my goodness, this is probably gonna get really exciting right here, it's real quick. Get real interesting. Here, scoot over. No, the fish is not small, I saw it. Well, he crushed the mine and he didn't uh, eat I'll it. I'll grab the rod. Here, there he is again. Here, here, here. I see him, he's behind the boat. I got him. Here he is. So this is why it's so important to always have multiple rods rigged. Well, I made out. He's, they're right behind the boat. I got it. Immediately I can go to a live Watch bait this. rod. Watch this. Where when we were trolling before. Boom. Are you putting any chum in? Oh, hooked up. Over the bimini. <laughs> they look small, but I, I saw a here. bigger fish. Well, there's one like attacking my lure, but he won't eat it. And there's some smaller bait fish behind him. Look at this fish behind me here. Well, there's a, look, there's the log right there. There's going to be a big fish. Oh, here. look at that, man! There's Kelly, get your dive gear on right look now. Look at them all. There's a keeper oh, right God. there. Look at them all. They got half of my lure. Babe, just I catch them rod and reel. What? Just catch them rod and reel. We gotta rig it all up. What are you more. talking about? There's a log right there. A pallet, babe. Get in and shoot one of these big ones. There's a bigger one right here. Uh, you want me to keep this on? Don't pull on this live wheel game. I got one. This is like an opportunity to life. Look at that. So neat. So neat, isn't it? It's like an aquarium. So many triple, baby triple tail and baby trigger fish. What you got, Captain Mike? Got a little dolphin on here. I'm gonna try and get him in the boat now. Oh, he just took off. He's fighting. Kelly, here's dolphin right oh, here. Oh, here they are. They're all underneath me. A whole school of them. Oh, there's a big one right there. Got Kelly in the water. They're coming to you, Kelly. She just dove down after something. He's hooked right in the corner of the mouth too. Did 
Bingo. Keep her fish. Just like that. Dolphin tacos for dinner. Dolphin tacos. Look at that beautiful fish, why don't you? Oh yeah. Pretty. Pretty fish hook right in the mouth. Nope. Nice. We'll take it. I've always said I'm an opportunistic. We started out sword fishing, got zero bites. We were headed in to go tile fishing, came across a beautiful pallet. Kelly got in the water to spear one. They wouldn't get anywhere near her. Captain Mike put on a live pilchard. No, that was squid head. No, it was pilchard. I oh, a live pilchard and no, just caught fish. the on bigger one of the bunch. So, bear wasn't hook. huge, but definitely bear was good hook. eating. Catch them on bear hooks. But check out these triple tails swimming right up to me. Beautiful triple tail, huh? Get some good video of it. Bear Let's hook. see if you can catch another one. Bear hook. Alright, you ready? Bear hook. Here we go. Bingo! <laughs> they just like the bear hook, apparently. I wish a 40 pound bull would swim up with her in the water right now. Let's so see how many, many baby triggerfish? And another one. <laughs> you plucked him for right up his Look foot? at that. Show him the triple tail right next to you. A lot of people have lost rods because of these little jacks. When they get in schooly dolphin, they accidentally leave a hook in the water. And they just take it. You're chasing your hook. I'm catching them on a bear hook. <laughs> oh, I got the big one on a bear hook. I don't even need bait. Oh. So yeah, that was dope. Kelly got to get in the water the most beautiful. Like anytime you find something floating offshore and you can get in the water with it, it's super beautiful. But I want to talk to you guys about this company right there. My buddy Catfish in Kentucky, when Kelly and I were up there turkey hunting a couple weeks ago, had some of this in his truck. And I have no affiliation with this guy whatsoever. But I'm telling you right now, it is the best stuff you will ever eat in your entire life. And the coolest thing about it, for those of y'all that have spent $20 on a bag of jerky, $10 or $15, somebody's like, let me have a bite, or let me have a piece, and they reach in the bag, and all of a sudden they pull out this huge piece, and you're like, well, there went all my money. This stuff is beef jerky, but it comes in sticks. It's grounded and put in a little tube, and it's just normal beef jerky. So if you are at a party or on the boat fishing, you can hand it out equally, and it is... Literally, oh my God, good. It's the best stuff ever. And I want to help this guy grow. He's on Facebook only now, but we're going to build him a website and sell this stuff all over the place. Cause I'm telling you, this isn't a sales pitch. This is, I'm not making a dollar off of it. My love. And when I ate it, I ate all of catfishes and he just sent me another bag. So I'll have everything in the link below. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Mm. Yeah. But the boys, back to them, because I forgot about them like twice now. They don't like all that jalapeno stuff and whatever. So I'm just going to sear them a couple pieces in this pan with just garlic salt and serve them some white rice, and they're going to be in heaven. Just like so. All right. I haven't missed very much in this video, I don't think. But don't go anywhere because my last video I asked y'all what I should do with my backyard. And my neighbor has something that I want very bad. But I need y'all's help with the problem she's having. So when we get done with this video we're going over to her house. And I'm going to show you what she has and I'm going to ask y'all for your input. Look at this though. I'm just going to drizzle them mushrooms and onions and this sauce all over top. You'll see as it cooks that it's going to turn into a glaze more than anything. Now, probably 10 more minutes. All right, so while the fish is cooking on the grill, I want to take a second to show you my boat because I know a bunch of y'all are new to my channel. This is my 23 foot bay boat. I've got a 300 Suzuki, two power poles, two bait wells. This is where all my batteries, my cranking batteries, 
Over here I have a five gallon wash down pump. It's completely covered in sea deck. This is storage for tackle. Underneath here is for my trolling motor batteries. I've got a 12 inch Simrad, a Fusion radio, which is unfortunate because I never get to play music on YouTube. I've got another bait well here. This is for drinks. This is for all my fish. This holds about, I don't know, 150 pounds of ice. That's my anchor hatch. I've got a 112 Minkota trolling motor. And I absolutely love this boat. It's completely set up. I've got an ice machine. I've also got a 15.3 Diamondback airboat with two power poles, which I would never own a boat again without power poles. And over there is my 1856 Pro Drive. And yes, I got a bunch of clutter because we do so many different things all the time. Just like the other night, Robert showed up and said, hey, let's go do a bass fishing, frog gigging, fish gigging video. So I had to take a bunch of stuff out of there and it ended up with my airboat. So just wanted to take a second to show you guys my boat. And right now, most importantly, I wanna show you a mistake that I made yesterday that could have cost us our life. Now I'm born and raised right here in Jupiter and Stewart, and I know how to read storms in that ocean for the most part, like the back of my hand. But yesterday, I misjudged one. I was six miles offshore when I saw it approaching and I said, yeah, we gotta go. Well, I should have said we gotta go 20 minutes earlier. I run in as fast as I can, 50 miles an hour, and it meets us about a half mile out the inlet. And thank God I wasn't any farther than that because it was extremely bad. I mean, it was blowing 40 miles an hour, hail. Y'all watch this. And when we're done, I'm gonna pull the fish off the grill. my good buddy stale cracker would say put that on a cracker dude <laughs> you guys it's so funny how the world of social media has changed our lives completely we've met new people like literally everybody Kelly and I meet is either a fan in a grocery store or out fishing or on social media like it's a whole new world of people out there let me just show y'all how this is about to go down one nice scooping scoop of white rice Uncle Ben's we are going to take one of these beautiful pieces of mahi-mahi, just like that. Now, I didn't put all of the sauce on there. I wanted to save just a little bit, just like so. And we've got a little bit of toasted coconut. Now, if you price this fish out per pound what it cost us yesterday, it would probably be worth about, oh, I don't even know, a couple hundred dollars a pound. But typically it doesn't cost that much. That's one fish, four amazing meals, and we're about to let Kelly Young tell us what she thinks about it. But you two act like you've never ate before in your life. What's up, Tyrese? You gonna say hi to all your fans out there? All hi. your buddies? <laughs> Jay. Yeah. Have you have you just been starved? I like how you you just pulled that piece of rice in like a lizard. Yeah. <laughs> All right, babe. Let's see. I just tapped this fish and it fell right apart. Look. Oh, that's when you know fish is perfect. When it just falls right apart. All right. Let me get a little bit of jalapeno, a little bit of onion, a little bit of coconut, a little bit of rice. Jacob over here just mauling. All right. You what? They're just mauling down their food right now. Trying to walk from the game room to here was a struggle. <laughs> that was really good. The honey with the coconut and then the garlic, sweet and salty. That's what makes it so good. What about that blue gate panel behind you somebody made me? That thing's pretty dope looking. Shout out to the fans. Jake, how's your fish? Good. Tyrese? You gonna come fishing and hunting with us? Mm -hmm. 
Jake, you can introduce your buddy to your fans. Who is he and where'd you meet him? Uh, he goes to my school. He's in my class. His name's Tyree. It's not Tyrese. <laughs> it's Tyree? Okay, this morning they were back in the creek. They were hunting. They set up the blind. They were waiting for squirrels. How many Danko knives am I missing right now? Two. Mm. Actually, when we know where they're at. They're, mm. they're all stuck in pieces of wood out there. We were bushwhacking. Mm. We went back so you like the fish, babe? Really I've good. never made that for you really good something super simple super easy and can taste amazing now we will see you guys over at my buddy's yard because i want you guys to see this so many of y'all left awesome comments about my side yard now i need your help again because i'm going to show you something over here that i want to do here but there's a problem and we got to figure it out this is our neighbor laura who's also a good friend of ours her son is tyler who you've seen in videos before her husband tom's out front He's addicted to flying his drone. And if you hear it right now, hey Tom, we're trying to video over here. So this is their awesome garden. It's all organic, it's all hydroponic, and there's only coconut husk in there that the plants are growing in. And this is the pump system that runs it over here to this awesome garden. Now when she first got this, we came over here and it looked like a tropical rainforest. She had everything you could imagine growing as good as you could ever imagine and everything looked perfect. Well, over some time, we live in a pretty residential area. Nobody else around here is gardening and all of a sudden, bugs showed up. So you can see her tomatoes, the leaves are eight. You can see her broccoli has been eaten tremendously bad. We also had a really, really bad summer squall come through here and break some of her tomatoes off. So my question to you guys is, is how do we stop the bugs? Because she's just been coming out here in the morning trying to find them, squeeze them, kill them. She got ladybugs, right? You got ladybugs? Ladybugs for the aphids. And then the birds started eating the ladybugs. So we have this awesome design. We have this awesome plan. She can pretty much grow anything, but as you can see, the bugs are eating everything she grows pretty much. What are these, onions? Green onions, thyme, lemon thyme, sage, garlic, chives. You got garlic? Where's garlic? So these are garlic chives, and then these are garlic. They take about a year to grow. Tomatoes, what else have we got growing? Are those collard greens? Broccoli. Uh, more broccoli? Shows how much I know. This is a regrow from organic celery that I bought and I just put it in water and then replanted it in here and it just took off. So that's almost ready. All right, so this is where we need you guys' help. She's also got corn and watermelons over there. We need y'all's help with what do we do with the bugs. We can't continue doing organic. We spray pesticides on here. And the fertilizer she uses doesn't help with the bugs, obviously. Is it organic fertilizer? Yeah. So it's all organic fertilizer, so all we need help with is the bugs. What do we do with bugs? Because I don't want to spend the money and build this system at my house and the bugs just jump right over there because I'm not home near as much as she is, so I definitely can't do it. This is a head of broccoli here, huh? Yeah. This is so neat and there's absolutely no dirt, right? No dirt. All coconut fiber. That's so cool. These wires to hook so things can grow up on y'all leave a comment below and tell us what we should do because i'm going to come over and start helping her i know my good buddy that has a youtube channel arms family homestead he's huge into gardening and i'm sure he'll watch this too and give me some of his feedback but i know a ton of you guys do a bunch of gardening and we need help because when she first started doing this it looked literally like a rainforest and now it looks like the sahara desert it was a food jungle. <laughs> it was a food jungle. Literally, you would bring me and Kelly bags full of stuff and say, here, eat it. And now it's dwindled down to pretty much nothing. So one more cool thing is her and her husband, me and Kelly, and all of our kids rented a place from July 10th to July 19th and venture out down in the Keys. So if y'all are in that area, definitely get with us. We'll do a meet and greet somewhere while we're there. And I look forward to y'all's comment, but right now this video is ending. Thanks for watching. Sorry for the little bit of clickbait with the thumbnail, but I had to get y'all to watch it somehow. Right now though, it's time to get up out of here. And like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of shape. Oh, got it.